here. Let's see how close I did with you as a level one. Talk to Isabel. Uh, they tell me this town is crawling with adventurers for hire. Does that include you? Because I have something you might be interested in. I represent Vaunt Arcana Technic from Sharn. You haven't heard of us yet, but trust me, you will very soon. We lost a ship with an important cargo just outside Stormwich Harbor. It sank straight to the bottom, and I need an adventurer who's not afraid of getting their feet wet to go get our cargo back. Excuse me. Sorry, coughing fit. Um, how am I supposed to help if the ship is underwater? Don't worry about that. Magic is what we do. We'll set you up with an enchantment that will let you operate beneath the Thunder Sea and teleport you straight to the salvage site. Once you're, the, um, excuse me, once there, you talk to our salvage crew, they can point you to the direction of our missing cargo. If you all sounds good, let's get started. You might as well notice or not one for waiting around. Send me under the sea. I'll see what the, I get your cargo back. Excuse me, terrible, another coughing fit. Okay. Now, if it wasn't going to get me a copyright hit. Oh, no, that's too bad. I didn't notice that. Kind of like it when it's bright. Anyway, um, this is where I'd play the Under the Sea soundtrack. However, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So as you can see right now, we are in a little bubble. Our little hamster wheel of underwater action. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, this is an old mechanic, actually. This used to be what happened in uh, the Red Fence Fathom of the Depths. They did modify this around the Feywild expansion simply because you were super slow. You had to, like, press, and then you would inch your way, and then you slowly underwater. build up speed. Now Encased you basically run a magical full movement bubble speed of air. underwater. A warforged waves you over. And they changed some of the underwater no mechanics you can see. The sent to salvage uh, the ship's water cargo. Being, water the foreman says that dangerous, dangerous creatures damages. threaten their salvage uh, operation. Uh, you will be doing damage. them it's a increased. favor if you clear out the Longest local the wildlife. Barrier allows you to move, fight, and uh, cast on the ocean floor as you normally would, with some natural limitations to jumping and tumbling. Now, from what I have seen, um, the sonic damage is a little bit. I have not seen that it's been increased. The electric damage, as you can see, is absolutely increased, but the sun damage is not there. So, take that with a grain of salt. So, what we do is we run around to the side here, and as you can see, there's this, I don't know what you want to call it, a temple, a the pyramid. The water near around. these ruins churns violently, creating unnatural eddies. Something nearby must be causing these dangerous currents. Indeed it is. It's a ritual site. So we come over here, we say, an orb floats above the magic flames, its surface graven with strange ruins and shapes. They must be the source of the troubled waters that sink the ships today. Allowing the Sawagan to plunder the wrecks later. UMD, which is used magic device, attempt to disable the magic device. Now that this ritual site has been dealt with, the Sahuagan can no longer use water currents to sink nearby ships. Using your superior knowledge of magical devices, you quickly figure out how to disperse the orb, orb portal's magical energies. It will take quite a bit of effort to activate the portal now. That should do it because um, use magic device is a class skill for both Artificer and for Alchemist that made that a very easy thing. I also have a ring that's giving me plus eight charisma, which is also giving me a plus four bonus to my use magic device. So that made that a pretty simple check. Now, if we want to run around um, on the ocean floor here, you can see there's shipwrecks and there are other things that we can explore. Um, but realistically, it's just kind of a pain. There, it's a lot of running around for not much experience. And as uh, Voodoo Spice will tell you, you do not get additional Reaper experience for options. They are just unexperienced, so most people will remember and just straight up skip them. 
So we're just going to go ahead and do that as well, simply because I don't have any patience. And again, even though we're not as crippled as we used to be while running around underwater, we are still somewhat limited. And I would prefer to not be doing that. And I am just quietly sniping these guys one at a time. Because I don't want to get overwhelmed. Mobs and DDO um, shed their aggro, which means that if you used to be able to pull them one at a time, like so I'd shoot one guy or bluff him and he would come over, but now they all come. If I shoot this guy, all of them are coming. So all the nearby mobs will do that and they will bucket the grave that. You'll notice that it seems like all of these are always marching in a, a strung out parade in a si single file. That is because they, particularly because of that mechanic, they can and will absolutely um, shed their aggro to everything around them. see that fight can get very ugly very quickly because especially as a ranged character underwater um, you can't kite very well and you're saying well why didn't you just run past them which you can do i won't lie i can just straight run past them gone straight up to the uh the door and run through the problem is, is that they remain aggro now um, it used to be that once something lost sight of you it would container uh, salvage from the sunken ship ships 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 around the entrance to this games. underwater cave but none have vaunt's mark on them the Sahuagin must have taken Vaunt's cargo inside the cave. Sir, you step out of the water and into cool cave air. It seems that the Sahuagin have created some sort of magical barrier to keep the ocean at bay. Oh, sorry, I was talking about the narrator. So, um, yes, you could do it, and they would. Uh, they used to leash, but now, basically, effectively, to prevent people from running right past, it used to be a, a viable strategy in DDO monsters say eternally aggroed and they and in, in only in very specific situations and very um, specific quests do they ever white leash usually in situations where it's the least advantageous for them to do so so um yeah so i could have left them outside but this all counts as one instance so they would all been aggroed which would have possibly gotten an engine alert in here had i left them so I usually clear up the outside just because there's going to be, again, more ambushes because the video does everything. It's uh, jumping people on ambushes. Um, you find a small key and wonder what it opens. And so obviously this is clearly an ambush. A Sahuagin standing atop a rock high above sounds the alarm. <sighs> Fools, you've made enemies of the Dagamore, he croaks. More forces rush in from the caves nearby. Tanky boys, they soak a lot of punishment. Something is attacking the hermit. She won't help me. She will just stay there and get her ass beat. Because, um, unlike the garbage mobs in the game, every every mob in this game has quickened. 
so all of their actions happen no matter how much you hit them. Whereas the hirelings actually have clear mechanics, which means that if they can't keep getting hit, their spells can fail, their actions can fail. So if she keeps getting hit, then... But again, why she is willing directly to face me, I have no idea. So, the was an ambush was fierce, but you've survived so, so you it handily. A lot of, and this is one of the reasons why a lot of people just don't use them. Now I called her in here specifically because um, it can get out of control. And I'd like to have her be here in the room in case I need an immediate heal. As opposed to fumbling around with my hot bars trying to get it done. Because, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, an alchemist has heals. Why are you not just doing that? Well, because the alchemist heals are bombs. And if you don't target yourself to make sure that it explodes at your feet, it will go sailing off into oblivion. And when you're in the middle of something and you're trying to shoot something with a weapon and while at the same time trying to bomb yourself, um, it doesn't work. Also, um, you'll notice that a bunch of those were zombies. And what happens is, is because zombies and all undead are uh, vulnerable to healing spells as a damage spell, it um, means that they can be targeted, which means that you can actually be throwing your heals into the face of mobs. And that's a bad time too. And we've been asking for some time as a player base to have a, an option or a trigger or a toggle that was um, a target self only or, or a zero mob portal, trigger which so allows that you cannot trigger, go, hiding from you cannot target um, mobs with the spells because it's like nobody does that. I don't know anyone that's like dropping heals on top of undead. Like you need your heals for yourself, you're not going to use that as an offensive weapon. That's just simply not going to happen. At least, I mean, I don't know anybody who does that. I've never seen anyone who's done that. Because again, it is priority A1 that you not die. That is, that is, uh, DPS is zero when you're dead, as the old saying goes. Now, if you are a braver soul, you can run all the way around and, and go that way. However, oop, nice spike. Um, no, the invincible urn. You saw it here, chat. There we go. So yeah, you can run all the way around the ship, but then you gotta go through all those trash mobs. So what most people do, and by most people I mean myself, is that you just jump across here. No longer be able to try to sneak by those guys, but don't shoot them because they will, again, because they will really help them buck a grenade or aggro all the way around. Because this is fucking very dangerous. So basically, what you're seeing is that um, if I hit these guys, they'd aggro, and if I pulled these guys, they would all, and like the whole thing would just, it would just turn into a parade. That guy's floating in midair. He, he died with drama. Alright, so I'll bring my hireling over here, hook her, and then I will bring out my displacement, hit the speed, tag him in. Your search is finally over. <laughs> out of the way, you can finally take a look at Vaunt's cargo. Look at all these strange, odd, book-looking things. Mysterious device. The crates are labeled with the Vaunt symbol. This small device must be one of the objects that the pirates put so much effort into stealing. But even on close examination, you can't figure out exactly what it is. Whatever this stuff is, I'm getting paid to secure it. Ding. You've recovered Vaunt's mysterious shipment at long last. It must be very valuable to have drawn such um, attention. Those are not bad. Whatever it is. Out of this quest, um, you can get um, the Acolytes... Uh, Acolytes Lenses, I believe they're called. Which is a plus eight intelligent caster item. It's a great little item. Um, you can also get um, Pamas, which are like a sickle for monks. If you do the optional, 
for the devourer there will be random ones there's i think three or four different ones and i believe there's a set of bracers as well in here and the flickering ring which is um an electric um, resistance ring which is a very nice little item all of them are pretty cool like they're not bad little items but there are better uses for those slots so if you don't have anything better it's not bad also i believe that is a free-to-play quest so you can just jump right in there Ooh, still stealing and assassinate now that's fascinating with magical sheltering i'm just gonna go ahead and take that thank you very much um but yeah so it's and most people have it by now so you if you're in there and you're like hey if you pull you know x or y item i'd love to have it then they'll be like oh sure not not a problem i'll pass it most people in this game are pretty good about that it's very you know it's very rare if you go into a quest and you say oh i you know i'm looking for this item if anybody pulls it please pass it and most people unless they're saying look i'm looking for it too um but otherwise i'll just say now nah, you can have it because otherwise uh, for most players including myself now it's to, it's down to inventory management i've got 12 alternate tunes on this account and they are all storage every single one of them is nothing but bank storage so there's just so many items for so many different options now if you play the same build all the time like if you're like voodoo who's always playing like a warlock tank or his druid tank all the time that's fine because you only need one bank space really in a nutshell i mean how much stuff can you do you possibly need if you're always playing the same build but if you're like me and you get bored quickly with the build and then you want to like change it up and do something else then you're gonna have a lot of accumulated junk and then you'll always be tweaking and optimizing as is always the case because that's one of the fun parts about ddo is that it does give you the option of a lot of build variability you don't get the cookie cutter stuff that you would get with like um world of warcraft or even with lord of the rings i'm not an expert on lord of the rings um but that is my understanding is that it's very much designed in the idea of world of warcraft so again you tend to get very homogenous builds um and really you could say they're not much of a build at all it's basically a class and there's only kind of you kind of railroad it down a couple of different options for whatever it is you're doing but in ddo not so much you can you can mix and match like again this particular class i'm playing right now is not it's not really the way it's designed to work i mean it's it was designed to be functional but it is you know not really what the intention was the alchemist for a vile chemist you're supposed to be using um simple weapons like uh clubs or daggers or what have you or throwing knives but i'm not doing that i am using crossbows with the inquisitive tree and a bunch of different mix and match options to make this build happen um i like it because it does a lot of stuff um, it's a, it's a fairly strong leveling build, which is why I like it. Um, if you if it, the bombardier is probably stronger overall, um, but I have played bombardier and it is a wretched experience until um, level six, at which point it just becomes a miserable experience until level twelve, at which point it becomes a hilarious laugh. You just bomb your way through everything like a sorcerer. Um, at which point you're just like, well, then if I was going to do that, why don't I just play a sorcerer and just start immediately nuking from level one so that's kind of my takeaway on that and again I, I liked bombardier it was a fun time like you walk into a room and you just blast everything because you're ignoring elemental resistance just like a sorcerer would be but again at that point you're up to like you got 12 levels in before you've been able to blow anything up and you're like well i could i could have done this a lot faster earlier if I just played a different class. So that's why I've, I've done this. And it does give me the option to disarm traps, which is a lot of bonus experience, which allows me to skip a lot of content, which is not that fun to play, let's be honest. And that is one of the things, this is why my, my guild is actually make fun of me. This is my rant about this for the...